You are welcome to our language on the subject language theory. It includes three modules, theoretical phonetics, theoretical grammar and lexicology. This is the first lecture, the theme of which is phonetics as a branch of linguistics, phoneme as a unit of language. These lectures are being specially designed and delivered for the students of the specialty Foreign Language to Foreign Languages, starting at the Department of English and German Languages. The outline of this lecture includes the following points. Phonetics as a branch of linguistics, aspects and branches of phonetics, methods of phonetic analysis, links of phonetics with other branches of linguistics, and the phoneme theory and phoneme as a unit of language. The word phonetics is derived from the Greek word, which means sound. Phonetics is not a separate science. It is a branch of linguistics, like the other branches, such as grammar, lexicology, and stylistics. It studies the phonetic structure of the language, that is, speech sounds, word stress, syllabic structure, and intonation. These four components form the pronunciation of a language. Therefore, the knowledge of the phonetic system of the language and the mastery of its pronunciation involve the study and mastery of each component of its phonetic structure. Phonetics is quite independent and develops according to its own laws. As an independent branch of linguistics, it has developed branches of its own. Today, the sphere of phonetics is wide and deep. It deals with phonemes and their distribution in words, their mutual adaptation, syllable formation, stress, intonation, the relation between oral and written speech, and there are a number of other problems. If we come to the second point of the lecture, we can say that there are different branches and aspects of phonetics. You can see, you can see them here as a scheme. We'll consider each of them in more detail. Speech sounds have four aspects, articulatory, acoustic, auditory, and functional. According to Vasiliev, these four aspects cannot be separated from one another in the actual process of communication, but each of these four aspects can be singled out for purposes of linguistic analysis and thus becomes a separate object of investigation, which necessitates the division of phonetics as a science into several branches. Each of these branches of phonetics has its own methods of investigation and its own terminology. The branch of phonetics, which is concerned with the study, description, and classification of speech sounds as regards their production by the human organs of speech, is called articulatory phonetics. It is the oldest, the most developed, and productive branch of phonetics. Acoustic phonetics studies the way in which the air vibrates between the speaker's mouth and the listener's ear. In other words, the acoustic aspect of speech sounds, their physical properties. It is sometimes called experimental, instrumental, or laboratory phonetics, because experimental methods and instrumental techniques are widely used here. The branch of phonetics investigating the perception of process is known as auditory phonetics. The branch of phonetics that studies the functional, linguistic, social aspect of speech sounds and all the other components of the sound matter of the language, syllabic structure, word stress, and intonation, is called phonology. It investigates sounds as units that serve communicative purposes. Besides the branches of phonetics described above, there are other divisions of phonetics.
Traditionally, phonetics is divided into general, which studies the nature of phonetic phenomena and formulates phonetic laws and principles, and special phonetics, which is concerned with the phonetic structure of a particular language. Special phonetics is subdivided into descriptive and historical. Special descriptive phonetics studies the phonetic structure of the language synchronically, that is, it studies its contemporary phonetic system, while historical phonetics looks at it in its historical development, or diachronically. The study of the historical development of a phonetic system of a language helps to understand its present and predict its future. Historical phonetics is connected with general history and the history of the people whose language is studied. Historical phonetics uses the philological method of investigation, which consists in studying written monuments and comparing different spellings of one and the same word. Closely connected with historical phonetics is comparative phonetics which studies the correlation between the phonetic systems of two or more languages. Another important division of phonetics is in the segmental, which is concerned with individual sounds, that is, segments of speech, and suprasegmental phonetics, which deals with the larger units of connected speech, syllables, words, phrases, and texts. Phonetics can also be practical and theoretical. Practical phonetics studies the material form of phonetic phenomena in relation to meaning. Theoretical phonetics is mainly concerned with the functioning of phonetic units in the language. There are branches of linguistics which are closely connected with phonetics because some phonetic information and fact are of great importance in their spheres of investigation. Phonostylistics studies phonetic phenomena and processes from the stylistic point of view. It studies the way phonetic means are used in this or that particular situation. Another linguistic branch is phonosemantics. It investigates the connection between the sound form and the meaning. This connection may easily be observed in onomatopoeia. It is also realized in sound symbolism, which implies that some sounds and some combination of sounds may evoke different semantic associations. For example, some words beginning with SL are ugly and unpleasant, like slime, slash, slum, slug, though there are lots of neutral words. The next issue we are going to consider is methods of phonetic analysis. Each branch of phonetics uses its own methods of research. Sokolova states that phoneticians generally distinguish methods of direct observation. They are carried out without any other instruments of analysis than the human senses. And instrumental methods. The methods of direct observation are the oldest, simplest, and most available. They consist in observing the movements and positions of one's own or other people's organs of speech in pronouncing various speech sounds, as well as in analyzing one's own muscle sense during the articulation of speech sounds and comparing them with the resultant auditory impressions. These methods can be effective only if a person using them is specially trained. Instrumental methods were introduced into phonetics in the second half of the 19th century in order to supplement the impressions deriving from the human senses. They are based on the use of special technical devices such as hand mirror, spectrograph, internograph, oscillography, x-ray photography and cinematography, CD records, laryngoscope, and others. In this picture, you can see some technical devices used in phonetic investigation. A 
These two ways of phonetic investigation are widely used in modern phonetics and combined in research work. The subjective methods of analysis by sensory impression and the objective methods of analysis by instruments are complementary. For instance, articulatory phonetics borders with anatomy and physiology. It uses methods of direct observation whenever it is possible, lip movements, some tongue movements, combined with X-ray photography or X-ray cinematography, observation through mirrors as in the laryngoscopic investigation of vocal cord movements. Phonology possesses its own methods of investigation, special linguistic methods, which help to interpret phonological and functional properties of sounds as socially significant elements. Nowadays, practically no area of practical phonetic investigation can do without the combination of subjective and objective methods when the results of instrumental analysis supplement those available from introspective analysis. The next point we are going to discuss is links of phonetics with other linguistic branches. Phonetics is one of the basic branches of linguistics, and of course it is closely connected with the other linguistic disciplines, lexicology, grammar, stylistics. This connection is determined by the fact that language is a system whose component parts are inseparably connected with one another, and therefore, the sciences that study these component parts must be interconnected too. Phonetics formulates the rules of pronunciation for separate sounds and sound combinations. The rules of reading are based on the relation of sounds to orthography and present certain difficulties in learning the English language. Thus, vowel sounds are pronounced not only as we name the letters corresponding to them. For example, the letter A can be pronounced as A, R, or air. For the system of rules of reading, phonetics is connected with grammar. It helps to pronounce singular and plural forms of nouns, the past tense forms, and past participles of English regular verbs correctly. Another manifestation of the connection of phonetics with grammar is sound interchange. This connection can be observed in the category of number. The interchange of f, v, for example, wolf but wolves, s, z, th, th, helps to differentiate singular and plural forms of such nouns as leaf, leaves, house, houses. Vowel interchange is connected with the tense forms of irregular verbs, sing, sang, sung. It can also be observed in onomatopoeic compounds, hip hop, ping pong. Phonetics is also connected with lexicology due to the accurate presence of stress or accent we can distinguish certain nouns from verbs. For example, object, which is a noun, to object. Due to the position of word stress, we can distinguish between homonymous words and word groups. For example, blackbird, which is a kind of bird, drost, and blackbird, it is just a bird with, uh, whose color is black. Phonetics is also connected with stylistics. First of all, through intonation and its components, speech melody, utterance stress, rhythm, position, and voice timbre, which serve to express emotions, to distinguish between different attitudes on the part of the author and speaker.
In addition to these linguistic branches, phonetics is also closely connected with a number of non-linguistic disciplines, which study different aspects of speech production and speech perception, such as physiology, anatomy, physics, acoustics, mathematics, statistics, logics, and computer science are used in phonetic research too. The next large issue we have to discuss is phoneme theory. The founder of the phoneme theory was Baudouin de Courtenay. His theory of the phoneme was developed and perfected by Sherba. He stated that in actual speech we utter a much greater variety of sounds than we are aware of, and that in every language these sounds are united in a comparatively small number of sound types which are capable of distinguishing the meaning and the form of words. So they serve the purpose of social communication. As Leontieva points out, there are different opinions on the nature of the phoneme and its definition. Ferdinand de Saussure suggested the abstractional conception of the phoneme. It is regarded as independent of the phonetic properties according to this theory. Trubitsko and Bloomfield viewed the phoneme as the minimal sound units by which meanings may be differentiated. Jones defined the phoneme as a family of sounds. The members of the family show phonetic similarity. No member of the family can occur in the same phonetic context as any other member. This view was shared by American scientists Bloch and Traeger. They define the phoneme as a class of phonetically similar sounds, contrasting and mutually exclusive with all similar classes in the language. Sherba was the first to define the phoneme as a real, independent, distinctive unit which manifests itself in the form of allophones. Professor Vasiliev developed this theory and presented a detailed definition of the phoneme, he states that a phoneme is a dialectal unity of three aspect, aspects, material, real, and objective, as it really exists in the material form of speech sounds and allophones, abstract and generalized, it exists independently uh, on our will and intention, and we can make it abstract from concrete realizations for, for classif classificatory purposes, and functional. It performs the following functions. Constitutive. It constitutes words distinctive. It makes one word distinct from the other. And recognitive. It helps to recognize words. Peter Roach, Cambridge phonetician, explains the notion of a phoneme in the following way. We can divide speech up into segments and we can find great variety in the way these segments are made. But just as there is an abstract alphabet as the basis of our writing, so there is an abstract set of units as the basis of our speech. These units are called phonemes, and the complete set of these units is called the phonemic system of the language. The phonemes themselves are abstract, but there are many slightly different ways in which we make the sounds that represent these phonemes just as there are many ways in which we may make a mark on a piece of paper to represent a particular letter of the alphabet. We find cases where it makes little difference which of the two possible ways we choose to pronounce a sound. For example, the sound b at the beginning of the word such as bad will usually be pronounced with practically no voicing. Sometimes, though, a speaker may produce the bear with full voicing, perhaps in speaking very emphatically. If this is done, the sound is still identified as the phoneme b, even though we can hear that it is different in some way. We have in this example two different ways of making b, two different realizations of the phoneme. One can be substituted for the other without changing the meaning. We also find cases in speech similar to the writing example of capital A and little a. 
For example, we find that the realization of t in the word t is aspirated. As are all voiceless plosives when they occur before stressed vowels at the beginning of syllables. And the word it, the realization of t is unaspirated. As are all voiceless plosives when they occur at the end of a syllable and are not followed by a vowel. The aspirated and unaspirated realizations are both recognized as t by English speakers despite their differences. But the aspirated realization will never be found in the place where the unaspirated realization is appropriate, and vice versa. When we find this strict separation of places where particular realizations can occur, we see that the realizations are in complementary distribution. One more technical term needs to be introduced when we talk about different realizations of phonemes. We sometimes call these realizations allophones. In the last example, we were studying the aspirated and unaspirated allophones of the phoneme t. Usually, we do not indicate different allophones when we write symbols to represent sound. That's all in brief concerning the content of our lecture. And you are offered a set of comprehension questions to check um, the way uh, you have understood the content of the lecture. To make your knowledge of this theme more profound, you have suggested a list of sources for your further reading. Thank you for your attention.